Hey everyone, welcome back to Goblins 3. Last time we made our way to the tavern and learned about a method of transportation in town. But before Blount leaves, he's got to know what happened to Winona. So he's looking for her in the handle of Corrin's magic sword. Meanwhile, she's trying to get back the key to the maze from Fort Bayless. And we're playing as her now. He doesn't want to give back the key to the maze that I got from father. Well, that was rude. So let's see what Blount has to write about this situation. Eh, not a whole lot to be said, although they misspelled Bukassier up in the headline there. We'll find out about that eventually. For now, we need to figure out a way to get that key back. So, let's just go ahead and storm that tower, I suppose. These materials won't resist an explosion of dynamite. Dynamite? Unfortunately, we have nothing. Including no dynamite. So let's see if this Incan fellow will help us. I understand that he's a callback to an earlier cocktail game. He is the last of the Incas. He sings the lost splendor of his people. How tragic. We're going to have to respect this fellow. Meanwhile, we got a cute fuzzy creature up here. Let's respect it, too. At least in a fashion Sam and Max would be proud of. But we have fuses. Presumably an ingredient for dynamite. And in our search for the rest of the ingredients, we must leave no stone unturned. Well, nothing explosive down there. But there's some magic tools up on that tower that I think we're going to want. Looks like a bag full of magic things. I don't know how she determined that. Let's walk into this magic door in the sky. Yeah, we just pop out over here. It's another one of those doors that doesn't do anything. We've also got a keg of powder. Undoubtedly gunpowder. And just below, another friendly fellow. A monk with a skull for a face. Okay, he maybe he's more scary than friendly, but he's guarding a piece of flint. Bandy, bandy. Well, we want that flint, but we can't get too close. So we're going to have to take this stick from his feet. I mean, surely he's not going to scare us away if we're just standing at his feet. And we can use that to reach the flint. Eh, the puzzles do get tougher, I promise. I am Ouya, the magician. I'm hiding. I have been mugged by four bailers. He stole my bag of magic spells. I'm scared thinking he will use them. Poor fella, his name was taken for one of the worst video game consoles ever. But I'm not too worried about that. We've got our flint. And we just need one more thing to make dynamite. Meanwhile, let's take another look at that bag of tools. I could try to help Ouya get his bag back from Forbalus. Yep, now that we know what it's for, we're even more determined to get it. So the problem is, 
What can we use as a container to put powder in to make dynamite? Something cylindrical and made of metal, probably. There are times when I hate the things I have to do for liberty and safety and... Yeah, but that was cool. Poor fellow. He wants me to make another flute using my flint. Well, why not? It's the least we can do. So we'll just take one of the pipes from his pan flute and beat it into shape with the flint. This is how crafting works. Uh, well, how is an Inca going to play an Andy's flute? And she won't even try. I was hoping for at least some degree of musical skill. I believe his song is called Flight of the Condor. But Winona doesn't really know what to do with that condor. In the meantime, it'll eventually get bored of hanging around and just fly right past the bag of spells. This is where Ouya comes into play. I mean, the poor guy doesn't have his magic, but we can still tell him to do stuff. It's my bag. I must find a way of getting it back. I mean, would this really be a goblins game if we didn't have a partner? So from here, it's just a matter of the usual timing and trying to convince Ouya to stand in the right place. Always a Herculean task. <laughs> now, we just ride the condor. I got back my bag with magic spells, but for Bayless, kept one of them. So now that we've got Ouya properly equipped, we can deal with this rock. So let's see what your magic does, little man. Bamboo! I should blow up this stone. There is bamboo underneath. Yeah, I don't know why we want bamboo, but... We should get back to the task of making dynamite. Of course, we can always try to blow things up with magic. But it's useless. And can Ouya face for Bayless directly? Not even worth the trouble of having a rock thrown at him. So let's get on with this dynamite. First, we take a pipe. Then, we fill it with powder. Again, presuming it to be gunpowder. We add a fuse. And we light it with the flint. There's no metal there, but oh well. This piece of dynamite won't work. It falls instead of sticking. So we can only throw the dynamite to places where it'll stick. And I think you're probably going to begin to see a slight problem with this part of the game. We have to make a lot of dynamite. 
And if we throw it onto something like this brick... We finally blow up a tiny piece of the castle. Like a really, really tiny piece. And there's another brick up there in the upper right, which is actually around under Fort Bayless. Might be a bit more meaningful to blow up that part of the tower. All right, we're accomplishing stuff very, very slowly. There is one more ledge on this tower. So let's see if we can land it on that windowsill right on the far side. This little piece of dynamite is not powerful enough to destroy this. So we need big dynamite. Alright, well there was one more target that Winona pointed out earlier. So let's go ahead and throw the dynamite somewhere where it'll do a little more damage. Boom, baby, as they say. And we can finally get to that bamboo. Of course, she won't do anything with it, because it's just a baby bamboo shoot. Barely enough for a Chinese meal. So let's see if we can make it bigger. And there you have it. That is a bigger pipe that will hold a lot more gunpowder. So we'll see about blowing up that window at least. It's the last one. I will have to find more to finish my work. <laughs> yep, yeah, for absolutely no reason, the first piece of dynamite you make after blowing up the rock... Uh, that's, that's not the flint. Yeah, once you make that first piece of dynamite, Fort Bayless scares off the little creature with the hairs, and you can't get more. Yeah, there is a tiny, tiny slab of rock holding the two halves of the tower together now. Meanwhile, there is a head here which has got a helmet on it, and if we remove the helmet, alas, the skull has no hair, but we can fix that. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous unless you're just randomly casting magic on everything, but if you're not doing that, you're not playing Goblins 3 properly. Yeah, somehow those hairs will burn. But of course, we're going to need something to make the dynamite stick, and this stump over here in the corner is covered in sticky bark. So let's see if we can get at what's making it sticky. We'll just crack it open with a flint. And yes, the tree is full of glue. Yeah, the other version I have calls it bird lime, which is apparently a sticky substance that people smear on branches to catch birds. I've always seen it referred to as sticky sap, but whatever it is, it will make sticky dynamite. So we only need little pieces for the bottom part of the tower. And once we've constructed the dynamite, we just pour some glue on it. 
and we light it. And we have to remember to hold the end that isn't covered in glue. Don't worry, that's just a one-time Easter egg kind of thing. Once you've managed to screw it up once, she will get the message. You don't have to actually do anything different. And the rest is really just repeating the same process we've already demonstrated that we've learned. Doesn't take long, as long as you can click on that tiny pipe. And one last part, which is a challenge because you have to use both a big pipe and covered in glue. Bet nobody ever would have thought of that. Alright, let's finish this thing. Okay, we've adequately demonstrated our resolve, and Forbalus is surrendering. transform my darling into a butterfly. I must find her fast. All right, so we'll get on with that. He's very invested in this person he's only met once. Okay, so we set foot into town and Chump is immediately kidnapped. And all Blount seems to be able to think about is that transportation. He needs to create his own, he says, but... The captain promised us that the owner of the grocery store would help us. So... Let's go inside and inquire, and see if we can get back our bird pal. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of groceries in this grocery store. He's got a piece of ham hanging from the ceiling. Huh? It must be a speciality of the area. I'm sure they all serve it dangling. Okay, note to self, it's a trap. But we love pushing buttons. Okay, so we can't push the button because there's a spider guarding it. The lamp is made with a full moon stone. It's locked! Alright, doesn't seem very useful. But then over here on this other foreground shelf, there's an egg sitting on top of a key. And it's very hard to convince Blount to walk to it. Alright, at least a rat is scarier than a spider. So let's have a word with the grocer, see if he can help us in any way.
The Joker doesn't want to see me. He says he's busy. Oh, really? Well, I'll just have a seat and wait until you're done, then. I think he seriously can just sit here and snooze all day. Well, it's not. Oh? Alright. We'll raid his cupboard, then. Oh? Oh? Everything's locked, and the only thing he's got for sale is a single piece of spaghetti. This good man seems to think that there are limits to curiosity. Which he won't even let us take. All right, we'll have to show him that letter. He isn't paying any attention to my letter. What is he waiting for? Well, I've only got one other thing that he could possibly want, and that's money. Not that he has anything to buy. But, okay, he'll take the money. Big dummy! Can't get anything out of him! And he doesn't give me my coin back! Well, maybe now the letter will convince him. He's at least talking to us. Good heavens! He got me! The captain owes him money! So, in other words, there's no help forthcoming. Big dummy! Can't get anything out of him! And he doesn't give me my coin back! Well, the only thing that all that accomplished was getting rid of the rat that was guarding this egg. So I'm taking it. Fantastic! I must make this boa boa come alive so I'll have an assistant. We've already given up on Chump. Meanwhile, the important thing here is the key that the egg was sitting on top of. With this, we'll be able to unlock that moonstone lamp. And the trail kind of goes cold there. I have no idea what this is supposed to accomplish. <laughs> this time, I'm gonna fix the grocer. Ha! <laughs> yep, meet Wolfie. Blount was eaten by wolves, and so he turns into one in the light of the full moon. So now, we can get past that spider and push the button. <laughs> I'm really scared of spiders. Okay, so we can't do that. But let's have a chat with our shopkeeper and see if we can get any information out of him now. I mean, he's scared of us. Not very helpful, the old mummy. And he has the guts to keep my coin. Well, that's no good. But at least he can't stop us from getting the spaghetti or the contents of that pot in the windowsill. Okay, so we did manage to scare Chump away, and he'll never return. Meanwhile, there's one more locked cupboard up here.
sadly throwing it, didn't manage to open it. Boo. Boo. But we've seen this puzzle before. All we need to do is jump onto it from above. Yeah, Wolfie's good at breaking stuff. <laughs> and now he's got a tool to help him. So now we can break all kinds of things. Like skulls! <laughs> so yeah, that's the extent of his usefulness. We got our coin back. He doesn't want to tell me where he hides his stuff. Well, there's only one more thing that we need here right now. And in order to save time, I'll just get it. And we'll find out later why we need it. The spring and the sofa will let us get up to this Gadui trophy. Boo. Boo. And what we need to do is break its horn off with the hammer. And then I gotta jump down and pick it up. So that'll save us a trip back here when it shows up on a list of things that we need later on. Meanwhile, there's one more thing I want to check out while I'm here. Let's see what Blount has to write about it. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to look at the paper when I first got here. It kind of gives away the puzzle. But in our new wolf form, we can go take on the world! Woo! Thanks to the daylight, I'm getting back to my normal appearance! Alright, so we're just boring old Blount. She's not doing too good. She suffers from the drafts in the roof. Well, yeah, you got this giant hole in your roof. Don't worry. I think I can fix that. You know, let's see. Something to cover up a hole in a roof. Yeah, the umbrella should work. Good as new. The annoying thing in this screen is every time you go up or down the stairs, you gotta click on your destination again. She gives me her hot water bottle because she thinks she won't need it. She thinks so, but she's wrong. Anyway, there's also this young lady over here. It's the alchemist lover who has just received a letter from him. Ah, uh, how sweet. Well, speaking of the alchemist, he lives over in this house. He is the one who made the memorum. He is glad that the dragon is well. Well, potions could be useful. He doesn't work because there is a shortage of ingredients. He lets me in. So we can make potions, but he doesn't have anything to make potions from. Well, that's perfectly alright. 
We've brought some stuff with us, and we can use that. Meanwhile, there's a weird mechanic going on in this room where we're only using Blount's two hands. The rest of Blount is inherently useless, as demonstrated here. Yeah, that cutscene was only in the CD version, and it really adds nothing. Meanwhile... The growth elixir, or grow elixir, has the power to speed up growth. We can learn what all the different potions do. The potion for wings, or fly elixir, makes wings grow and allows flight. The speed elixir, or speed elixir, allows someone to run faster. The potion for the memory, or memorum, brings back all forgotten memories. The potion that makes poof, or poof elixir, doesn't do anything. That last one sounds like the best one. But we need to figure out how to make those potions, and that's what the spell book is for. But the right hand is only for picking up and using things. The left hand has to read the book. Yeah, that never gets annoying. The memorum is a dash of pain and a few tears of joy. Yeah, we've already got that. We don't really need the recipe. So we'll use the switch to turn the page and get to another recipe. To make growing, sir, mix some broken shell with cooked spaghetti and ashes of Jidui's horn. Alright, well we've got all three of those things, we just need to prepare them. So first up, broken shell. We've got an egg which has a shell. And rather than putting it in the mortar and grinding it with a pestle, we'll just stick it on the hot water bottle. And there's our baby. Cute little guy. Yep, that's going to be our assistant eventually. But for now, we just need its shell. That we grind in the mortar. And the pestle is just over to the left. It's one of the few things in the lab that doesn't require heat. So we just take a little bit of the eggshell and put it into this tri-dose mixer. As the name implies, you gotta mix three ingredients together. So the second one was cooked spaghetti. Now everyone knows, hopefully, that to cook spaghetti, you need water. So we take our bowl of water and pour it into a kettle. And yeah, we can just leave the water dripping. Nobody cares. Grab our one strand of spaghetti. Feeds like five, according to the ratios I've always been told. And we just have to heat it up. The water boils away, and we're left with just a single limp strand of cooked spaghetti. And finally, we need ashes of Jidui horn. So we put it into the ashtray, and just light the sucker on fire. Kids, don't try any of this at home. Except maybe cooking spaghetti. Oh, 
All right, so that's all three ingredients. Now we just need the left hand to push the start button. And wait until all five drops have dripped out. I'm not kidding. Take the bowl slightly too early and it's useless. But now we have growth elixir. I hope. We need a test subject. Let's give it to the snake first. Yep, that's growth elixir, all right. His name is Fulbert. He is grateful to me for having given him life. And so we have our new assistant. He says he can't wait to discover the world with such a talented reporter. So say the hands that beat up that talented reporter. Meanwhile, we need to make another dose of growth ixer. So fortunately, with the ingredients already prepared, we just need to put them into the mixer. Yeah, making a second dose of at least this potion is simple. Which is good, because this is the one that we need to make two doses of. And once we've created a potion, we just put it into one of these bottles for storage. Now, when we leave the room, we'll have Growth Ixer in our inventory, and Fulbert at our side. And here he is. He's a cute little fella. And as for the growth fixer, it makes things grow. There will probably be more purpose to that later. Of course, we've also got a boucassier egg. Told you it was spelled wrong in the paper. The egg is ready to break. He needs some heat. Well, we've got heat. We still have that hot water bottle. But he's tiny. This miracle of life is so cute, but the kid seems to be starving. I've only got one thing that might be able to feed him. Well, now I'll need a lot more food. And Blount's just kind of rude to him. Anyway, here's Fulbert. He just kind of zooms around from place to place. But that will, of course, be useful at times, as we're going to find out in the next video. He is the last of the Incas. He sings the lost splendor of his people. How tragic. We're going to have to respect this fellow. Meanwhile, we got a cute fuzzy creature up here. Let's respect it, too. At least in a fashion Sam and Max would be proud of. But we have fuses. Presumably an ingredient for dynamite. And, in our search for the rest of the ingredients, we must leave no stone unturned. Well, nothing explosive down there. But there's some magic tools up on that tower that I think we're gonna want. 
Yeah, not a whole lot to be said, although they misspelled Bukassier up in the headline there. We'll find out about that eventually. For now, we need to figure out a way to get that key back. So, let's just go ahead and storm that tower, I suppose. These materials won't resist an explosion of dynamite. Dynamite? Unfortunately, we have nothing. Including no dynamite. So let's see if this Incan fellow will help us. I understand that he's a callback to an earlier cocktail game. Paris Wave, we're just standing at his feet. And we can use that to reach the flint. Eh, the puzzles do get tougher, I promise. I am Ouya, the magician. I'm hiding. I have been mugged by four bailers. He stole my bag of magic spells. I'm scared thinking he will use them. Poor fella, his name was taken for one of the worst video game consoles ever. But I'm not too worried about that. We've got our flint. And we just need one more thing to make dynamite. Meanwhile... Looks like a bag full of magic things. I don't know how she determined that. Let's walk into this magic door in the sky. Yeah, we just pop out over here. It's another one of those doors that doesn't do anything. We've also got a keg of powder. Undoubtedly gunpowder. And just below, another friendly fellow. A monk with a skull for a face. Okay, he maybe he's more scary than friendly, but he's guarding a piece of flint. Well, we want that flint, but we can't get too close. So we're going to have to take this stick from his feet. I mean, surely he's not going to scare... Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Goblins 3. Last time, we made our way to the tavern and learned about a method of transportation in town. But before Blount leaves, he's got to know what happened to Winona. So he's looking for her in the handle of Corrin's magic sword. Meanwhile, she's trying to get back the key to the maze from Forbalus. And we're playing as her now. He doesn't want to give back the key to the maze that I got from Father. Well, that was rude. So let's see what Blount has to write about this situation. <laughs> 